Cheyanila Premadana Karana Pracho Cheyanila Premadana Karuna Pracho Eno Prabhu Kota Gela Acharya Thako Kahamora Saru Prupa Kahasanatan Kahada Saragunata Patita Pavan Kahamora Vata Yuga Kaha Kavira Eka Kale Kota Gela Gora Natara Ashane Koti Bo Mata Anna le pashiba Koranga gunera nidhe kota kele phaba Se sabha sangi la sangi ye koi lo vilas Se sangha na paya kande narotamadas Se sangha na paya kande Karuna Pracho Hena Prabhu Kota Kela Acharya Thako Translation. 
He who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy, where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where are my Srup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Garanga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against a rock and enter into fire. Where will I find Lord Garanga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Garanga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Naratam Das simply weeps. Today is the disappearance of His Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada. And we'll be reading from, in this regard, we'll be reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila. Chapter 1, uh, text 59, which is on the board here. It's a famous verse from the Uddhava Gita. Spoken, yeah, Lord Krishna to Uddhava. So if everybody could please repeat after me. <clears throat> jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Okay, Tato Duke Sangam Utsijya Satsu Sajeta Budhiman Santa Evasya Chindanti Mano Vyasangam Uktibihi Tato Duksangam Utsrija Satsu Satjeta Budhiman Santa Evasya Chindanti Mano Vyasangam Uktibi Tato Duksangam Utsrija Satsu Sajeta Budhiman Santa Evasya Chindanti Mano Vyasangam Uktibi Tato Duksangam Utsrija Satsu Sajeta Budhiman Santa Evasya Chindanti Mano Vyasangam Ukti Bi Okay, word by word, tataha. Therefore, 
do Sangam bad association. Utsrija giving up Satsu with the devotees. Sujeta one should associate. Budhiman an intelligent person. Santaha devotees. Eva certainly. Asya ones. Chindanti cut off. Mana Vyasangam opposing attachments. Bhukti Bihi by their instructions. Translation and purport by his divine grace, Asi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. One should therefore avoid bad associate bad company and associate only with devotees. With their realized instructions, such saints can cut the knot connecting one with activities unfavorable to devotional service. Purport. This verse, which appears in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.26.26, was spoken by Lord Krishna to Uddhava in the text known as the Uddhava Gita. The discussion relates to the story of Parurava and the heavenly courtesan Urvasi. When Urvasi left Parurava, he was deeply affected by the separation and had to learn to overcome his grief. It is indicated that to learn the transcendental science, it is imperative that one avoid the company of undesirable persons and always seek the company of saints and sages who are able to impart lessons of transcendental knowledge. The potent words of such realized souls penetrate the heart, thereby eradicating all misgivings accumulated through years of undesirable association. For a neophyte devotee, there are two kinds of persons whose association is undesirable. One, gross materialists who constantly engage in sense gratification. And two, unbelievers who do not serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but serve their senses and their mental whims in terms of their speculative habits. Intelligent persons seeking transcendental realization should very scrupulously avoid their company. Translation again, one should therefore avoid bad company and associate, and associate only with devotees. With their realized instructions, such saints can cut the knot connecting one with activities unfavorable to devotional service. So, so the sinful, they, or you could say the yeah, if you want to use that term sinful or whatever other terms you want to use, they attack the devotees. That's what they do. They terrorize, they attack, they have problems with the devotees. As we've been hearing in the morning classes, the Srimad Bhagavatam classes, about, and leading up to Hiranyakashipu, Right, attacking Prahlad Maharaj is a classic demon. So that's that's their business. They attack the devotees. Now the pious, they don't attack the devotees, but they also don't take the instructions seriously. Um, I mean, some of them do, but there's a there's a that's the fault of of a certain class of pious people that they say they respect, they adore formally, but when it comes to actually accepting the instructions, they don't, they don't, they don't accept them. Um, so you say there's, there's, there's faults on both sides. 
one is attacking, one's just not accepting the instruction. But here in this particular verse that we just read from the Uddhava Gita, Lord Krishna instructing Uddhava, and it's stated, it's been, uh, it's written here in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that the way that material attachments are cut in one's mind, and those material attachments is what is binding uh, souls to this world of birth and death and all the suffering that goes along with it. The, 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 the way those material attachments are cut are by hearing from those, uh, from, from devotees. Just, uh, just as Vijay Prabhu was mentioning to us some time ago, how he met some guy in book distribution. And it was interesting, I thought about this recently because I was, anyways, I was looking at some verses of the 11th canto, the Navayogendras, very important verses. And uh, one of the verses was saying, even, even if, even there may be a person who hates everyone, <laughs> But if they take to devotional service, they could become purified to the point where they don't hate everybody, but they love everyone or see everyone as part and parcel of Krishna. So anyways, Vijay Prabhu is mentioning how he met some guy in book distribution and the guy was with some friends of his and and the guy was saying that, oh yeah, you should take these books. I re I've read these books. And before I read these books, I, I didn't believe in God, and I used to hate people, everyone. But now I've read these books, and I believe in God, and then what did he say? Love I love everyone. <laughs> this was a transformation. So it's an example of, of somebody hearing from the words of Asada, the recorded words. Much of Prabhupada's words are literally recorded, the dictaphone and then transcribed. Uh, but hearing from Srila Prabhupada in the form of his books and it transforming them, uh, transforming their consciousness to such a degree that they make a complete, uh, let me say, three, six, huh? Not 360? Oh, really? Well, you don't want to do 360 degrees then, right? Yes, I understood. I heard you. 180. 180 degrees, yes. Yeah, sometimes 360 happens also. Uh, so, and there's many cases of, of people throughout the world, different countries, different locations, different, yeah, different, different all over the world who have been transformed by hearing Srila Prabhupada in the form of his books and, and hearing from devotees, repeating Srila Prabhupada's words. Uh, and as we were discussing recently, that how long can we preach to somebody? <laughs> we go to their home, you stay an hour, two hours, you may stay a few days, seven days, maybe, I mean, generally not, but you may stay whatever, some time, and how much can you <laughs> preach to them before you want to go or before they want you to go, <laughs> right? Apparently there's some saying in Croatia that, and it was Tirtumaj was telling me some time ago that some saying where after three days, you know, there's a, there's a mutual understanding that the person should move on. <laughs> so how long can we stay and preach to someone? But in the form of Srila Prabhupada's books, you put someone, you put Srila Prabhupada's books in their hand and they take them home, or you put a bunch of books in, Shri, in their hands, put a box of books, Bhagavatam or whatever, and that, those books go to their homes and on their shelves. And Srila Prabhupada waits there in the, form of, in the form of his book, waiting to instruct these people. And in this way, seven days a week, 30, uh, month after month, year after year, the books are waiting for that particular soul to turn to them. And then when, when they read, they're hearing from us, from, uh, from Srila Prabhupada, the Prabhupada, right? The best of all saintly persons. And this way their heart could be, uh, become transformed. But, 
but as it's being stated here, <laughs> the the instructions can be, you could say, unpleasant to a soul attached to this world, because like one devotee, uh, the could say, yeah, main leader there in Istanbul, Turkey, he mentions how, okay, he thought he was a very good Muslim, he grew up in a Muslim family. I mean, surprise, surprise, he's in Turkey, but, uh, but then he got Prabhupada's books and he would open the books up and then Prabhupada would just be, <laughs> he felt Prabhupada was really uh, cutting, you know, with his, punching yeah, punching him in the nose with the words. And then he would close the book and there was like this, you could say kind of love-hate relationship going on. And many people have had this experience with Prabhupada's books. I mean, some people just, you know, just but luckily he, he opened them back up and eventually became a devotee and is leading things there in Istanbul. Uh, so, but these, yeah, words can be, you could say unpleasant or cutting because, because of person's attachments. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he was very fond of this, you could say, uh, technique, which Srila Prabhupada uh, told us that his guru would use the chopping technique. That was the term, chopping technique. And it means chopping away the illusion in people's minds. And Srila Prabhupada said that people who would there were some people who would criticize him for that. Specifically, some followers would criticize him for that, and and that would lead to their at least, uh, yeah, falling in Krishna consciousness. But there's one quote from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in this regard. He says that the positive method by itself is not a, is not the most effective method of propaganda uh, in this comfort, uh, um, what's, what what's the word here? Confrontational uh, age. So in other words, just you could say speaking in a positive way, it's not good enough. It, it, it doesn't work. That's what he's saying. But he's saying the negative method, which seeks to differentiate the truth from illusion, with all its different forms is a better way to convey, uh, to convey the truth. Um, so in other words, to point out, okay, what is truth? What is illusion? Who is, uh, who is a saint? Who is not a saint? And so on. Uh, this is very important. This is what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is saying. And he's saying that uh, preachers should should do this, uh, speak the truth. And he mentions how this is the way that that people are able to become free from illusion, free from Maya. Um, so we have to tell people, okay, what is Krishna consciousness? Right? It's very important. We tell them what is Krishna consciousness. But we also, it's also very important to tell them what is not Krishna consciousness. Um, and we see that Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada, he spent a lot of time telling people what is not Krishna consciousness. And of course, what is Krishna consciousness? It's, it's also important. Um, so, but yeah, today, We are celebrating the disappearance of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And as Srila Prabhupada told us that this idea of disappearance and appearance, it's just like the rising and setting of the sun. They're very they're both very equally or you could say beautiful. So the appearance of a great personality is is wonderful and also the disappearance. One is that the disappearance of a great personality, they have exhibited their different qualities and activities in this world, spreading Krishna consciousness and so on. And their disappearance is there to show us uh, how to leave this particular world. 
Um, so on, in his last days, uh, which, I mean, it was, it's quite in many ways mysterious because there's, there's been made, um, like Sri the Prabhupada said, and others have said that he actually could have, could have stayed longer, but specifically he cut his, his time short in this world. And there's some indication they did that 10 years short based on, you could say some displeasure he had with his disciples and their behavior. Very interesting. Uh, but he went to Puri one last time and then he went back to Calcutta and he was there at the uh, Bhag Bazar temple. And that's where he, where he left this world. And uh, before he left, he, he gave a speech, which we won't read the whole speech, but we'll read part of it uh, now. And he starts out that, I, I have upset many persons' minds. Many might have considered me their enemy because I was obliged to speak the plain truth of service and devotion toward the absolute Godhead. I have given them all those troubles only so that they might turn their face toward the personality of Godhead without any desire for gain and with unalloyed devotion. Surely someday they will be able to understand that. It's interesting because he's saying that I have caused a lot of people uh, displeasure in speaking the truth, um, caused them troubles. But he said, I, I did that just to give them the right idea so that they turn towards Krishna. And he's saying, surely someday that will be, they will be able to understand that. So in other words, at one point it will, the, the fruit will, uh, or you could say the tree will bear fruit. In other words, they will take to Krishna consciousness. The power of a sa saintly person is such that it, even after some time that they, um, hearing the words of a saintly person may have an effect, even after, uh, maybe not immediately, but over time. Uh, just like the Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Shastra Koi, Lava Mata, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi, that just a brief association with a saintly person can award all perfection. Um, <clears throat> And the, the association of materialists is so dangerous that even a brief association with them can, can, can completely derail someone their whole life, actually. Um, those of you who heard me say this recently, you don't have to say the answer, but does anyone remember from the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, what pastime particularly demonstrates this? Okay, everybody, you say quick. You immediately think of a jamel. Yes, a jamel. His very brief association. It's not that he was hanging out with this woman <laughs> for, for very long. I mean, he just saw this woman and man embracing. It was a brief, brief association. But then he just couldn't get out of his mind or her out of his mind to the degree that he just rejected his wife and his parents and, and, and sought her out and found her and engaged in all types of sinful activities to maintain her and completely forgot about Krishna and just fell in absolute maya for his whole life <laughs> until the, on his deathbed. So just a brief association. But similarly, the association of a saintly person is so powerful that it has its effect. Um, all right. So all of you propagate the message of Rupa Raghunath with supreme enthusiasm. Our ultimate desire is to become dust at the lotus feet of the Rupa Anugas, the followers of Rupa Goswami. All should remain united and following principles of the Guru for this. In this ephemeral sphere, you should live somehow or other only for Hari Bhajan, worshiping Krishna. In spite of all dangers, criticisms, and discomforts, do not give up worshiping Krishna. Don't be disappointed that most people in the world do not accept topics of Krishna. Do, 
do not forsake your own worship of Krishna, which is your all in all. With humility like a straw and forbearance like a tree, you should always perform Hari Kirtan. Let our bodies, which are the, which are like those of aged oxen, be offered into the Sankirtan Yagya of Lord Chaitanya and his associates. So there's a little footnote that in times of yore, sacrifice was performed by offering aged oxen. This analogy is offering is of offering bodies into the sacrifice of chanting the Lord's holy names. We do not aspire to, to be any kind of heroes of karma or dharma, but our constitutional position and all and all is to, in every birth, to become dust at Sri Rupa Raghunath's lotus feet. The Bhaktivinodara or lion will never stop. With all your energy, devote yourself to fulfilling the desire of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. There are many among you who are well-qualified and able workers. We have no wish whatsoever, have no other wish whatsoever. Our only motto is, taking a blade of grass between my teeth, I fall down and pray again and again to become dust at Rupa Goswami's lotus feet, birth after birth. So it goes on. But So he's urging his disciples that you should have enthusiasm, not just enthusiasm, but he uses the word supreme enthusiasm. Wow, supreme enthusiasm. And doing what? Fulfilling the desire of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So what is the desire of Bhaktivinoda Thakur? The desire of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and prediction of Bhaktivinoda Thakur is that he was longing for that particular day when persons of different countries throughout the world would all get together and chant Lord Chaitanya's holy names in Mayapur. Of course, that day has come. But, uh, but it's not over because <laughs> there's many more souls who have not chanted Lord Chaitanya's names. Um, but of course, this is the prediction and it is happening throughout the world. And Srila Prabhupada, he meeting uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he met Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur as a young man of 24 years old. And as we know the story, how it goes, that he didn't want to meet him because he said, I know these sadhus, there's so many sadhus. And I, he wasn't impressed. But his friend, Narendra, he dragged him there and said, please meet this person. And Prabhupada explains that Narendra wanted to bring him there so that, so that, uh, so that he could get confirmation from a bai that this person was authentic because Srila Prabhupada was the leader in, 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 in the group. So he wanted to get his approval of the sadhu. So he went there and offered obeisances to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Luckily, the International Society for Krishna Conscious has procured that land. You could go there. When I was in Kolkata, I managed to go there, although we had a difficult time finding it. At least, I mean, there's a local devotee, but he hadn't been there in years. But eventually found. But it's a very uh, special spot, and they've really renovated it in a beautiful way. So when, you know, when people go to Calcutta, it's very important to go there, to that place where Srila Prabhupada met Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So when he met him in Narendra, he said that you two are educated young men. You should spread the teachings of Lord Chaitanya throughout the world, English-speaking world. And then Prabhupada explains that he argued with him. And he said, who will take your Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message? We're a, we're a dependent nation. We're not even a free nation. And then through conversation, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur completely defeated him. So when they left the place, Narendra asked Abhai Charan that, okay, what did, what did you think of Bhakti Siddhanta, of the sadhu? And Srila Prabhupada said that I, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message is in the hands of, a, of, a, of the right person. And, and the message of Lord Chaitanya will be spread.
So Sri the Prabhupada, uh, in the year 1923, moved his business to Allahabad. And in 1928, the devotees of the Godimath came and they wanted to establish a center there. And uh, in, they, and with Sri the Prabhupada's help, they did establish the center there and Prabhupada became, you could say, accustomed to the different activities of the Godimath and eventually he became uh, initiated. And, he's, and as he explained that, his family life, and specifically his business, wasn't going well. And he was explaining this to be Krishna's mercy. And how at times he was thinking that, he was thinking, or at times he was having, say, dreams in which Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was beckoning him to come with him. It means to accept the renounced order of life and to preach throughout the world. And Prabhupada at the time, he was thinking, this is a difficult, horrible. He, would, he, he said, this is difficult. I have to, I'm giving up my family life. And, but eventually, as we know, he, he did that. Execute the order of his spiritual master. And Srila Prabhupada gave, Srila Prabhupada gave uh, great, you could say, credit to his disciples. He said that he said that all of you are helping me to to fulfill the order of my spiritual master. So he says, I take it, I take you as all representatives of my spiritual master. Uh, in Los Angeles, he told devotees this. <clears throat> so, so the mission is not finished. <laughs> There's plenty to do and Bhakti the Bhakti Vinod Thakur he revived Vaishnavism trained his son Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur who who uh, came in contact with our Srila Prabhupada and and Srila Prabhupada spread the chant of Hare Krishna throughout the world um, but, and then you have disciples of Srila Prabhupada who have contributed uh, in so many ways, given their lives to helping uh, carry out Srila Prabhupada's desires and instructions, following his instructions, carrying out his desires, and they're continuing to do that. And then you have grand disciples who... <laughs> are also continuing. I'll say grand disciples who are, anyways. But you have grand disciples who are continuing um, of Srila Prabhupada. So it's the, the mission is, is very much still alive. Um, and as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said in relation to preaching, he says, one who has life, he can preach. So we have to have life. A dead man cannot preach. So we have to have life, um, enthusiasm, supreme enthusiasm. And this should be our, you could, you could say this should be our mission. We should make the mission of Srila Prabhupada, the mission of the Charyas, make it, we should take ownership of that. Not that it's solely ours, but we should take ownership of it. And don't think it's for the acharyas of the acharyas of the past or one spiritual master or but we should take it oh this is my mission i mean it's say our mission we work together um so does anybody have any questions or comments okay dvija money's hand went up pretty quick thank you so much for a wonderful class i actually have two questions um you were mentioning about how Srila Prabhupada met his spiritual master and he was with his friend and uh, I don't, maybe I missed it, but I never heard anything about... What happened to his friend? Yeah, what happened to his friend. So I'm just curious if there's anything that you could say. Oh, Prabhupada commented on that. He said, because he was speaking with one devotee and, he, and this devotee was saying how, this Prabhupada disciple was saying how he came to the temple and he came to the movement with a friend and how... He joined, but his friend didn't join. 
And then Prabhupada said, oh, yeah, I have a similar experience about this Narendra Mullet. Oh, Brahmananda was saying this. So, so Prabhupada, so the person didn't, you could say, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what happened to him, but he didn't join in the way Sri the Prabhupada joined. And yeah. I mean, many, many, many devotees have that experience. Maybe somebody, some of you have it here. You came to the temple with a friend and they were taking some interest in Krishna consciousness and you were taking interest and you stayed and they left. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question is is in in uh, in regarding the the fact that you were mentioning that Shri um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami wanted us to speak the truth and don't uh, just present a, a message in a nice way. And I wanted to ask about how we go out and preaching and distributing books. And uh, specifically, sometimes people have misconceptions. Like one time, I remember I was trying to distribute a book to an Indian family. And uh, there was a small child and she was yelling, I'm Krishna, I'm Krishna. And, and they were about to be, give a donation to me. And I could have said something, but I didn't. And uh, what would be... Sure, you know, sure his name wasn't just Krishna? It's, it, was, it was a girl. Oh, girl. Well, <laughs> Krishna too. Anyways. But, but, but anyways, but, but it's true. I mean, maybe the parents, I mean, it could be true that maybe the parents are thinking that they're Krishna and maybe they're in preaching that to the children, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can go on. Yeah, so uh, the question is about how should we present the message in such a way that, you know, some, should should we be also st straightforward and truthful or should we just le let Srila Prabhupada do that kind of preaching in, in, form of a book, in the form of a book? Well, I mean, you have that quote, Srila Prabhupada quoted, uh, I mean, it's a quote from Srila Prabhupada in which he said that he was actually speaking to one devotee who was a very big leader at the time, very influential, powerful, under him so many books were distributed throughout the world, and just very powerful personality. So anyways, he was speaking with him, and, uh, and he was also, uh, he gave amazing classes like he was well known for his class giving so, but he told this person that this disciple that what is the use of your 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 he said three minute preaching he said the real thing is to give him a book so that's the real and when we look at Prabhupada when he would give his pro when he would do programs wherever he went program he want he would want the books there his books Like when he was in Hong Kong, Bori Jun Prabhu writes a whole book about his experience with Prabhupada. And, and at one particular point, Prabhupada comes to Hong Kong and really chastises Bori Jun Prabhu. And it's a very interesting account. You could read about it, very uh, instructive. But anyways, <laughs> Prabhupada was having a whole conference there in a hotel in Hong Kong and a bunch of people, a lot of people were there. And then Prabhupada asked him, uh, you have the Bhagavad Gita. And then, and then Bori Jhan Prabhu says, no. And then Prabhupada says, oh, so what do you have? Just your, your smiling face? <laughs> um, so he wanted the, his books there. And so anyways, yeah, so that should be the goal. I mean, especially for distributors. I mean, persons who regularly distribute or irregularly distribute or whatever, but the whole idea is not just to talk with them, okay, but to give them a book because that's, they could take it with them. Um, but I mean, each particular circumstance is different. Um, but yeah, there may be times where, where we, so, sometimes like for example, speaking with someone you may, it, it may be very clear that this person's not going to accept it. They're not going to try to understand it. That may be very clear. But then there may be people around who are pious enough to, 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 to accept it. So in other words, you speak with that person, you carry on that conversation so that other people could hear and, and be benefited and be convinced, for example. 
But anyways, there's so many different uh, different uh, circumstances. But ultimately, if somebody asks us, we should. We shouldn't lie. We should tell the truth. Um, does that not answer your question enough? <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm I'm doing it right. You know, if if people in the beginning have some misunderstanding, and I give them the book, I'm I'm not at fault if they speak in something to me, and for the sake of you know. No, that's that's fine. I mean, because yeah, just. Yes, whoever's next. There's a. Uh, incident that happened when Vodhi was distributing books door to door and this lady uh, said, oh, oh, this is very nice, very nice books. I I'm a follower of, of Sai Baba. And she was happily, you know, expressing her uh, following of Sai Baba and he was thinking of saying something. He was just a cheater. Then he thought, well, maybe just, you know, have her take the books and have Prabhupada preach to her. Yeah. So she she took the books, happily took the books, gave a nice donation. Then he's going around other apartments around there, and she came running, and she said, I, I didn't give you enough. I mean, I'm going to give you some more. So so sometimes it's just let the Prabhupada do the preaching. Yeah, We're not quite as good as Prabhupada, so <laughs> he's the best. So another thing I just want to make a comment about uh this um, meeting of Prabhupada and 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 Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and and after the meeting, you know, Prabhupada he wrote this poem, Absolute Truth is Sentient, thou hast proved and personal calamity thou hast moved. He read that and he he, he was just a, he, how did he understand? It's like that past time it was a Lord Chaitanya and who was it? Rupa Goswami. So he was so fond of that, he, he told his editors, whatever he writes, print it. Yeah. So, yeah, he was very, very fond of Prabhupada. Thanks. When Prabhupada spoke at the University of Detroit, it was a Catholic university, and there was probably around 500, let's say 350 people. And many of them were professors and nuns and priests. It was quite a, you know, respectable audience. Prabhupada came and sat down on the Vyasa Sun. In, as he would arch his, you know, how Prabhupada had that regal way, he would cock his head back and survey the scene. And he called over Govardhan, the temple president, and said, do you have a book table? And it wasn't at the temple, it was at the university in their big hall. And we didn't, it wasn't set up. And Prabhupada turned to Govardhan and said, I will not speak until there is a book table. And he sat and had, told the devotees, have kirtan. We had to just zip back to the temple because the devotees had forgotten. It took about 20 minutes. And then when Prabhupada saw that there was a book table in the back of the hall, then he spoke, which I always thought was significant. And as far as whether, you know, we have to be smart. And you have to look at the person, you know, and, and, and get a vibration sometimes. It's not always just, you know, you have to hit them over the head. You know, you're in my, you're in, you know, and it doesn't mean that we always just a milk toast. I just want to get money and take the book and let Prabhupada do it. You have to think. You have to, I mean, there's, what can you do? You have to be mature. You have to be nuanced. You have to be intelligent. And so, you know, you, you don't let them just keep maligning and maligning and or saying some complete nonsense. You can throw, you just, you have to know how to, Prabhupada said, the art of preaching is to know how to catch the big fish and not get wet. So how to make your point, but don't you know offend them. You have to think about it. It's not a nothing. It's not cookie cutter. You got it. You know, it's not just one size fits all. You got to be smart. 
Thank you. Yeah, recently I was speaking with one couple came to the temple and I mean, he was he was aspiring to take initiation and he was chanting on his beads and everything. So I, I asked, I asked them, um, well, well, I asked, okay, he told me, okay, I'm aspiring for initiation. Then I said, well, and what about you? And she said, well, I'm on another, I'm on another path, um, a path of Gyan, and, and I already have a guru. So I said, okay. And then I said, uh, how long have you two been married? And then she said, they said, oh, two years, two and a half years. And I said, well, how long have you two known each other? They said, oh, two and a half years. So then I, I, told, I told her, I said, okay, well, it's not too late for you to take to the process of bhakti then. <laughs> and then she said, oh, well, I... I, I see it as the, you know the path is the same. You know, and I said okay. Well, anyways, and we just kind of like moved on. Now, some anyway. So, what what is the result of that? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I hope it's a, I hope it's a good result. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's necessary just to say something with the desire to help someone not for other reasons, but you say something with a desire to help someone and you plant a seed there in, in their, in their mind. And maybe that, you know, later on will fructify in a positive way. Maybe it won't, but that's the idea. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, last? Okay. Right, so we're meeting at 10 to 12 or 11.50. And then there'll be Puspanjali, and then there'll be Kirtan, and then devotees will break the fast. And Vijay Prabhu is here with us, a little, I think, more than a week before he goes back to Texas. Houston, Texas. I'm just joking. Unless anyone knows some sort of way <laughs> And uh, so anyways, Vijay Prabhu will be giving some classes throughout the week, Bhagavatam or Krishna Lounge or Sunday Feast, something like that. So, okay. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasad Thakur Ki Jai.